Hello. I'm so excited to come your way today. So I want to talk to you about a beautiful story in the Bible and then, you know, bring out some very relevant point that I think will be of great blessing to you. Okay, so that will be in Max chapter number nine. I'll read from verse number 17. Max chapter number nine from verse 17. And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I brought unto thee my son, which had a dumb spirit. And whatsoever he taketh him, he tears him, and he foameth and gnashes with his teeth, and pained away. And I spoke to the disciples, and I spoke to the disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. I spoke to your disciples that they should cast him out, but they could not. Take note of that because I'm going to come back to that. He answered and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? Notice, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I be with you? Right? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. 20. And they brought him unto him, and when he saw him, straightway the spirit take him, and he fell on the ground and wallowed for me. 21. And he said unto his father, How long is, he, is it ago since this came upon him? And he said, Of a child. 22. And often he had cast him into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if thou cast, if thou cast to anything, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus said unto him, If thou cast believe, all things are possible to him that believe. 24. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said unto him, Lord, I believe, semicolon, help thou mine unbelief. 25. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out, come out of him and enter no more into him. 26. And the spirit cried, and ran came sore and came out of him, and he was as one as one dead, in so much that many said he is dead. Twenty seven. And Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. Twenty eight. And when he was come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, Why could not we cast him out? Twenty nine. And he said unto them, This kind can can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. 30. And the departed turns and passed through Galilee. And he went not and he went not that any man should know it. Okay, beautiful. Now, so I'll take some relevant data or what you call I'll take some relevant data out of this statement as it's relevant to our discussion about faith this morning. Amen. Go really God. Okay. So, uh, um, right, I said relevant, so not all we're going to analyze, but relevant and still in context. Firstly, a multitude in 17 showed up. So one of the multitude showed up and expressed a concern about his son. And then it says, I brought him before thy disciple, right? And um, thy disciples could not cast him out. And last the scripture, they asked him, why could we not do it? And then he said to them, let's address the disciples first. He said to them, this kind cometh not but by fasting or prayers. Question is, was Jesus fasting? You see, he was in fasting. So it is not about that he has to be fasting that does it, right? This will now suggest that if you are not in the kind of position that could do this kind of thing, then fasting will put you in fasting and prayers will put you in that position because he was the bible did not say he was fasting when he casted out the demon so watch the first thing he said before he concluded with fasting he says oh faithless generation right look at it 19 and he answered and said oh faithless generation so the problem the real problem was actually faith Okay, and but because they lack faith, 
right he requested that they fasted and prayed to so come to the place of faith notice jesus did not say oh this kind is only is only me that can do it that means they could have done it but because they lacked faith okay but they casted some others but they couldn't do this one right so apparently this one right made too much sense of reality they couldn't deal with it it messed their mind up and thus they could not deal with it so jesus says you have to do something to deal with that now jude chapter number one verse number 20 said something very beautiful it says building up yourself in your most holy faith praying in the holy ghost that was jude paul in first corinthians chapter number 14 says he that prayed in an unknown tongues emboldens himself emboldens himself so in other words when we pray in the spirit right whether adding fasting to it or we pray in the spirit because it says fasting and praise when we pray in the spirit we have a way to trip ourselves off of fear and then boldness is generated in us of faith is stirred up that we may be able to deal with issues that we cannot deal with them if we lack it. Because it's important that you understand something. In Romans chapter number 10, it says, Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And the same way fear also comes by hearing, but hearing by the, the, the things of this word. So when you have exercised yourself, of this word right you will lack faith of the word of god to address situation but when you have exercised yourself of the word of god then nothing of this word can overpower you because you will have faith of the word of god but the spirit of god to overcome things um you know things of this word glory to god okay so you see first john chapter number five is number four it says you have overcome this word then it says even your faith so it is your faith that brings to the reality right of the overcome state that you that god has helped you to do because it's be of good shares i have overcome this word for you so until you feed your mind with god's word right and exercise your mind of that word you will not be able to exercise faith and live supernaturally like you should as against um you know as against the pressures that this word gets to bring okay or once you've been exercised of this word where you understand things on the natural light okay you know that if something happens to this person by natural this if he doesn't go to the hospital he will die you know you just know that whole human process it will be difficult for you to exercise faith and as a matter of fact watch this that's why some people will pray and then they will lack faith even to get a result from praying because because they are too exercised of this world that's why when i see a pastor when i see a doctor who is a pastor and does miracle i heal them a lot because i'm wondering how they were they were able to manage how medicine has exercised their mind and then believe the word of god that can cause uh, that kind of um, uh, supernatural provisions or miracles so to speak so it's something that you need to understand so he says they were a fit faithless generation and then right the guy says oh that's true but how how were you able to do it and all that he says okay dealing with your faithlessness you will need to fast and pray as a matter of fact i'll call that an emergency response okay but there's a proper natural response where you guide your mind where you you know guide your mind with god's word and you believe that god can do it right and you so you begin to grow to believe what god can do and what god cannot do next here is that jesus asked the father right how long has this thing happened to him now he wasn't asking because he did not know who he wants to know because we never saw him do anything with that information right he was requesting for an information but we did not see him use that information so that means he was not asking the information for himself he was asking the information to understand the state of the father to see how he can deal with the issue if the father had, had seen this boy have this from a child then he would have been conformed to agreeing that this is the state of this boy. So his mind would have been exercised with that challenge and thus he would be hard for him to have faith. That's why Jesus now says, 
uh, you are can you have faith because first for a miracle to happen it's three sides i told you before i said first it has to be god who can do it next he has to be you the, the the one who is administering the healing who believes in god and then the receiver who believes that god can do it through the one administering the he the healing right if that whole cycle is not complete you most likely may not get the healing happen so that that whole three cycle must must be completed but the part of god is a constant nothing makes him not to heal us right james chapter number one verse number five it says god is generous he doesn't count our fault so he always is willing to heal and help us right the the administer who is supposedly supposed to be an elder james chapter number five if any be sick let him come to the elders let him administer uh, prayers or oil right of that uh, pray and pray in faith that the person be healed so the administrator of healer must have faith in god and then the receiver the receiver or the recipient must have faith that god can do it through the administrator for him to receive the blessing so jesus needed to put the receiver right in the right position to receive right so he now says you need to have faith and this has a longer view and the guy said well it's been like that so apparently he shows that his mind would have been fashioned to accepting the son that way and just saying well let's just give it a try after all your disciples pray it didn't work but let's give it a try if it will work here but jesus didn't want it to go like it's gonna be a try jesus wanted him to believe that it can happen because he knows he knew that he was in the right frame of the spirit to make it happen and god is willing to do it but if he is not partnering in faith it won't happen so the guy said i believe then now says oh yeah, let's be realistic here help my faith so he called for help listen i tell paul a lot of time i said when you lack capacity instead of being arrogant because arrogance is not faith right when you say yes 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 and you really don't believe and then it doesn't work or you're saying yes 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 and the spirit of god is saying you gotta pray or you gotta you know pray some more trust god some more and then you get into trouble i've seen people who behave like that and then died in that challenge because um they they thought arrogance is faith no you pray you pray so in this case he says help my unbelief right that means he requested for help right against how he previously taught that he could see that it can be possible and of course jesus christ prayed and it was healed and then of course when he spoke to the disciples by the side uh, why they asked him privately and said how did you do this stuff we tried it didn't work he says because right this one comes by fasting and praying because you are not in a state of faith because he said earlier that it was faithlessness that kept that from happening right when he says who fit uh, uh look at it who faithless generation 19 how long shall i be with you how long shall i suffer you you see that right he called whole faithlessness so anything that doesn't happen to a believer is a function of no faith this is very profound right so if you will learn to always feed your mind with the word of god and pray in the spirit right you will not need an emergency fasting and prayer to get things done because you will always be in the state of faith to address things like jesus listen there are many great things that could have happened to you, many supernatural things that you could have enjoyed if you would have just had faith in your life. Don't just do the garbage in, garbage out. That's the place for the natural man. We believe in a natural principle, but we learn to prevail over situation by the power of God. You must do the same in your life if you want to find much more happen. Why you trade a great life? exercise yourself in god's word trust in the power of god always commit to praying right and then cause things to happen in your life that needs to happen in time bring a boost by the supernatural power so you can run faster and more accurate accomplish a lot of stuff enjoy good health enjoy financial provision enjoy pr pr protection enjoy provision enjoy success in every level so you can push god's work to happen faster listen here there's some things that are not coming to your life because you lack faith there's some healing you're not doing because you lack faith there's some things that you're suffering because you lack faith and this is available unto you god can make make anything happen for you if you can trust him but it's hard for flesh to trust god so we need to beat flesh in fasting in prayer 
in exercising ourselves with God's word so we can have much more result happen in our life. So when we begin to exercise ourselves by God's word, then we'll get much more result than we're presently enjoying. Much more can happen. God is the God that creates. God is the God that makes things happen. God is a good God. He wants to give you the best, but it's based on how much you're willing to receive, based on how much you trust him to do those things. It is not just a human process or an arrogant action it is a walk of faith glory to god hallelujah so I, I, I urge you today that you begin to position your mind feed your mind with god's word pray in the spirit all the time and trust god for more in your life and that that you trust god you gotta call it for it okay you just don't trust in your heart because with the mouth confession is made unto salvation so you believe in your heart and you declare it and then of course you will begin to find great things happen in your life. Thank you for listening and God bless you.